From the BZG studio in the Mission Dolores District, right in the heart of San Francisco, it's BZG News with Barry Courtney. over there, over there, and over here. What's up, everybody? My name is Barrett Courtney, and this is BCG News. It's BCG's weekly show where I talk about the crazy fucking nerdy news that's been going on in our lives this week, and I give my opinion on it. And before I get into the news, just some housekeeping right here. You might be wondering, Barrett, where the fuck is your Captain America Civil War review for BCG? Where is it? Hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, which if you know us here at BGG, it almost never does. But hopefully, our Captain America video review with guest Alyssa Shimoda should be going live the same, at the exact same time that this video is going live. If it doesn't work out, hopefully it'll be out soon. It'll definitely be out today on Friday. Um, but if everything works out, it should be live the same time this video goes live. So once you're done learning about all of the crazy nerdy news from this week, go over there and watch it. I think what we're planning on doing, we haven't recorded it yet, is uh, the first five minutes will be spoiler free. And then we will get into uh, some spoilers for you. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, the video does start off with spoiler free impressions. So. There you fucking go. Um, but before you leave and go watch that video, here are some important nerdy news. Yes, the rumors were true. The new Call of Duty has been announced, and its name is Infinite Warfare. It will be available on all major gaming platforms with a release date of November 4th later this year. The game itself is about evil robots and people in space and killing people in space and shit. Uh, the big kicker, though... The game's Legacy Edition, which is $80, includes a Call of Duty Modern Warfare remaster. The remaster will include the entire single-player campaign and only 10 multiplayer maps. I have a couple things to say here. All right. So, one, the trailer went up for, the, for, for Infinite Warfare, right? And... How dare you use a fucking David Bowie song to, like, mask the fact that this trailer is fucking dumb and to, like, distract everybody of, like, what the fuck is going on in this game? How dare you? How fucking dare you? God. You guys are fucking assholes. Like, oh, hey, this is fucking Call of Duty and it's in space and fucking crazy and to hide the fact that it's weird, we're gonna, you know... Use a David Bowie song, so go fuck yourselves. Um, and also, Infinite Warfare. Hopefully this is the last, like, warfare game, because where do you go? It's infinite. Where do you go after that? Maybe Beyond Warfare? There you go. There's your next fucking warfare title. If the next warfare game is called Beyond Warfare, I am owed $1 million. I don't care from whom. They could be Activision or fucking the government. I'm just saying, if the next Warfare game is Beyond Warfare, someone owes me $1 million, all right? Um, so, it, it, fucking, it, I don't know what this game's going to be about. It doesn't look interesting. And the, it, the thing that sucks is that the thing people are really into and the thing people were excited about was this uh, Modern Warfare remaster, which had been leaked, apparently. I didn't really report on it because it wasn't official or anything. Uh, sometimes I report on non-official things like Batman, um, Arkham Collection, and then it just never happened. So that's why I just sort of, I've learned from that to just not talk about leaks and whatnot, even though we do, I, I do have a news piece this week that talks about a leak. But anyway, um, it, it sort of sucks that you can't get the Modern Warfare remaster just by itself. And, and that's such a fucking, like... They knew. They fucking knew. Like, if they had just released Infinite Warfare, no one would have given a shit about this game. And so now it's the whole incentive of, like, hey, remember this game that was good and, like, interesting and you love a lot? Well, to get it, you have to buy this piece of fucking garbage. And I just think it's ridiculous. Like, okay, fine. If you want to attach – if you don't want it to be available – um, without Infinite Warfare, why not just make it $60? It's just this weird, like, you have to pay more to get this thing, and you can't get it anywhere else. Um, it's just fucking bullshit, okay? Just, it's an obvious ploy from 
the people who make Call of Duty, and they're just like, yeah, we should we should probably attach this because no one's gonna give a shit about Infinite Warfare because no one gave a shit about Advanced Warfare, even though we had Kevin Spacey in it. Um, so yeah, fucking Call of Duty, whatever. Anyway. This is the, the apparent leak that we have. Of course, I talked about I don't like to report about leaks, but of course, the next piece of news I have is a leak. If the King Court from Instagram is to be believed, Watch Dogs 2 is coming soon. Uh, the Instagram user was apparently a motion capture artist that is playing the new lead for the Watch Dogs sequel. Ubisoft has not commented on the apparent leak, although the Instagram account has since been set to private. Uh, from what you can see in the picture, and if I'm smart enough, I'll have... Uh, when I was talking about the news, I, I had a picture right over here uh, of this new apparent character. I'm interested. There's rumors that it's going to be based in San Francisco. Um, if it's as true, from what I can understand, uh, Watch Dogs 1 was very true to like what Chicago felt and looked like. I would be actually willing to go back to Watch Dogs, um, even though the first one wasn't that great. I'd be willing to go back to Watch Dogs if it was based in San Francisco, if it could give me that San Francisco vibe. I live in San Francisco, and it'd be cool to like see that and if they could actually pull it off. And apparently the, the lead character of this uh, Instagram user is to be believed is black, which is really cool because... Like I say, we don't have enough representation of other races in video games right now. We're slowly playing catch up with all the other different types of media that are slowly, slowly getting there. Uh, so, I don't know. <clears throat> Seems interesting. But the real thing we got to I, I, I gotta wait for. Even though all of these little rumors and these little leaks sound intriguing, I got to wait to see gameplay. Because that was the real fault. A lot of people bitch and complain like, Watch Dogs wasn't as pretty as the fucking E3 trailer three years ago. That shouldn't be your main complaint. If that's your main fucking complaint, like, I'm sorry for you. But the, the main problem with Watch Dogs was the gameplay itself. It wasn't fun to hack things. It was really easy and just sort of felt like it got in your way of just doing stuff it's like if we if you took out the hacking and just like snuck into places by like crawling through vents like batman um it, like i felt like the game itself wouldn't have been that different also car mechanics need to be fucking fixed in that game because i felt like i was playing an arcade like very bad arcade like car racing game and my car always felt way overpowered i would fucking run into a car and it would like go flying like 30 30 feet away it just didn't feel realistic it didn't feel great um so it's just the gameplay guys just fucking nail it nail it and then i'll come back Anyway, for the naysayers that naysay the Wii U, claiming that the support for it is dead, well, you're all fucking wrong. Super Meat Boy is finally coming to the console next week. Uh, this is the game the console needed, and will most likely bring millions of people back to the hated hardware. Obviously not, not true whatsoever. Don't understand why, after all of these years of Super Meat Boy being a thing, they're like, oh, hey, let's, let's put it on the Wii U. Because, you know, that's a crazy big market that we're missing. I, it, it just, it's a weird thing, um, especially since Nintendo is really trying to fucking choke the life out of the Wii U so they can make room for the NX. So it, it was just like a weird timing sort of thing. But, hey, if you own a Wii U and have never played Super Meat Boy, um, you should probably play it somewhere else that isn't the Wii U. Um, so, yeah. Moving on. Not really news, this next piece, but... It's important to me. Uh, it's that time of the year again where J.K. Rowling apologizes for killing a character from Harry Potter since the anniversary of the Battle of Hogwarts was May 2nd earlier this week. The character she mourns this year and said that she regretted killing him off was Professor Remus Lupin. Um, fucking just why? You, you say you regret these things and why did you do it? But I, I understand here. I just want to talk to you Harry Potter fans out there for a minute. And why Remus Lupin had to die is because Harry had a lot of father figures and uh, throughout this entire series. And um, for everything to sort of have a nice little package and to, to save what he had left, he, he had to have one family. And... Um, of course, uh, Sirius dies because he's the closer father figure of the, the three that he sort of had, which is uh, Sirius, uh, Lupin, and um, Dumbledore to an extent. Um, what the fuck? 
If you guys hear sirens in the back, I, I'm, I apologize. But anyway, uh, Dumbledore to an extent, Sirius, uh, Lupin, but also Arthur Weasley. And uh, I understand because uh, J.K. Rowling said that like we Arthur Weasley had to survive, so she had to kill off the other two. Makes sense because in the end, he can only have one like father figure, and I, I understand that it had to come down to between uh, Remus and uh, Arthur. And you got to keep Arthur Weasley. He's fucking awesome. Um, anyway, some actual news. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, the game, has been reported by Insomniac Games to be the fastest-selling game in the franchise's history. The movie, however, did not do so well. Uh, for its opening weekend, the movie, based on the game, debuted with a $4.8 million weekend and also didn't receive great reviews with an 18% currently on Rotten Tomatoes. It's really sad and really weird that this game that seemed to have uh, this movie that's based on a game seemed to have a lot going for it especially since the game is reviewing well and it's selling like fucking hotcakes and but like i think if you know colin moriarty colin moriarty from kind of funny kind of funny games he talks about like how he was laughing out loud at a lot of the humor in ratchet and clank i don't really like he hadn't laughed that hard since like south park i don't really agree with that but the humor in it was cute. It, like, it, it didn't stand out to me, but it was cute. There was little things that I was interested in. Uh, I was more interested in the dialogue that wasn't really funny, but th sort of expanded the the universe and uh, gave more character depth to characters, even if they're just like little side characters. Um, so I, I didn't think it was like laugh out loud funny, but um, I, th I think it had a charm to it. And it's so weird that the game had cutscenes from the movie that looked like, oh, hey, the, the movie looks like it could be as charming as the game, and it doesn't seem that way. And that sort of sucks, because it looks like this could have been the first really good video game movie. Um, and, and, uh, and it just sort of sucks that it sort of just fell flat on its face. Um, and you could, you're could, probably telling me, well, I'm a big Ratchet and Clink fan, and I thought it was so true to the fucking the, the universe and stuff. All right. Henry, can you come here real quick? Ratchet and Clank was one of the most average movies I had ever seen in my life. There were a few jokes that worked, but for the most part, the entire game served as a basic 3X structure that did nothing extra, didn't even highlight anything that made the Ratchet and Clank universe as interesting, boiling it down to basic techno jargon. You don't even get to see the weapons as much as you really hope to, and most of the characters just get brushed over besides... Ratchet and Clank and Captain Quark. The movie is completely mediocre. I would not recommend it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that is coming from the biggest Ratchet and Clank fan that I know. And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people, who a lot of people know, he is like the pinnacle of Ratchet and Clank fans. And he thought that movie was like, whatever. So if you're one of those people like, oh no, it's so true to the fucking games and you're, you'll, you're not a true Ratchet and Clank fan if you didn't understand the movie. It's like, no, go fuck yourself. I just brought in living proof that that kind of thinking is incorrect. But it sucks for the movie, but I'm happy for Insomniac. Uh, they made a kick-ass sort of uh, revival of the series. I'm excited to see where the video game series goes. Um... And some more uh, cool video game news right here. Dishonored 2 has been given an official release date of November 11th, along with a pretty cool trailer. Uh, Bethesda has also stated that a public gameplay demo will be available at E3 next month. So if you're going to E3, one, you're a lucky, lucky fucking bastard. And um, if you know us personally and you're going to E3, you should try to get us press passage. Um, but also, two, you'll be able to play a, uh, a demo there if you're going to E3. Um, Interesting. I'm not super into, uh, into Dishonored. The trailer was really cool, though, and it, it might pique my interest to try it out. I'm sure our, our, our lovely friend, uh, a part of BZG, Ricky Baldassan, he'll probably get Dishonored, too, and I might borrow it for, like, a couple hours, check it out or whatever. Um, I don't know. Dishonored fans. You know me so well. <laughs> uh, Dishonored fans, cool news for you. Check it out. And I, I believe... Um, in this game, you can play either as the protagonist from the first game or the the woman that – the other, like, main character woman in this game. And I don't know if you could do that in the first one, but that, that was something that they were talking about. Shows how little I know about Dishonored. But cool news for Dishonored fans out there. And um, the last piece of news 
here today that I wrote down. I've got some pieces of news after this, um, some breaking news from this morning uh, that broke. But uh, for the last piece of news that I, I wrote down um, and printed out, there are rumors floating around that Ben Affleck's solo Batman film will feature most of Batman's main villains. From reports, uh, DC is trying to make the definitive Batman film and tell the ultimate Batman story. This makes me really fucking nervous, okay? Like, I was... You guys are going the right direction. Ben Affleck's directing, and he's doing a treatment of the script, and it's like, okay, he's really good at those things. Not the best actor, but he's really good at those things. So, yes, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this goes. And then this comes out, and I can understand you, you want to please the fans, but it, all, it also seems like you're trying to shove a lot of things into the, into the movie that might not make sense or anything um there's speculation that you'll probably see there'll probably be like a scene at arkham with a lot of these villains but i don't if it was only a scene at arkham that you see a lot of these villains this wouldn't be a leak this this wouldn't have been discussed the like no one would have like talked about it no one would have been like oh yeah like we've got this really cool big scene no I'm really worried that what they're going to do is going to – I have a gut feeling that this is going to be a combination of Hush and Under the Red Hood because you know that they like to fuck with stories uh, in the in the DC movie universe so far and just make it their fucking own and not have it make any sense because you know what? Batman v Superman was based off the Dark Knight Returns. Dark Knight Returns as a comic in, in and of itself is fucking amazing and has great – like story like points and character development and it makes sense why batman and superman are fighting and then they wanted to so shove a bunch of shit into this uh into the movie and then it didn't make sense of why they're fighting and now i'm concerned that you know the hush is famous for having the huge rogues gallery so i have a feeling that this is going to be oh it's going to be hush but instead of tommy elliott it's actually going to be jason todd and if they do that i am I am done with the DC universe. I have no hope. I have no hope if they do that. Hopefully, hopefully I'm overthinking it. Hopefully it's just like a fucking they're they're walking through Arkham and it's like Gordon and Batman are walking through Ar Arkham or whatever and you see like the rogues. Hopefully I'm reading into it too much. But I have this really fucking bad feeling that I really love Hush. I really love that comic. I don't think that could work as a movie. Like at least with all those characters, you know, like you'd really have to trim down a lot of those characters for a hush movie to make it two and a half hours. And so I'm just to make it two and a half hours incoherent. I'm really scared that they're just going to like, yeah, let's keep all the rogues gallery and let's make it mainly a Jason Todd story. And because of all of that, they're going to try to squeeze it into a two and a half hour movie and none of it's going to fucking make sense. And it's just really going to infuriate me. And it's, and people are going to see it and be like, yeah, Ben Affleck ba nailed Batman. He, he fucking nailed it. And I'm still going to be like, I don't understand Batman's character in this universe yet. <sighs> Some breaking news from this morning. Well, by the time you're watching this, this was uh, two days ago. But uh, this morning for me, um, Titanfall developer Respawn has been announced that they are working on a new third-person Star Wars game, and they are currently hiring. So I, I, I don't know what the website is, but if you look up Respawn Star Wars, if you go to Respawn's website, I believe, they have like a sort of thing. So if you're in game development at all and you want to be a part of... A, what could be a really cool, cool Star Wars game, go fucking check that out. Um, so I'm really excited for Respawn. They, they, they've worked on Titanfall. I'm, I'm, I wasn't a huge fan of Titanfall 1. Hopefully Titanfall 2 will be a better step in the a better direction uh, because they're talking about there's actually going to be like a campaign and a story and things that make sense. Um, so hopefully... They make a kick-ass Star Wars game. And he, I, I was speculating about this. Is it going to be a single-player game, or is it going to be a multiplayer game? Hmm. Because they could do the next Battlefront. Because they're teaming up with EA, right? It could be the next Battlefront. And, you know, like, I didn't hate Titanfall. It, just, it didn't stick out to me. Like, I, I like story and whatnot. But, like... I think they did multiplayer, okay? So it would be interesting to see if they do the next Battlefront. Huh. Huh. 
But if not, I, w- I would still love a, a, a solo campaign. But don't worry, Amy Hennig and Visceral are working on that, and hopefully it's a fucking horror Star Wars game. I would fucking love that. Uh, but anyway, the last uh, piece of breaking news from this morning, the day that I'm recording this, Fallout 4's uh, first big story expansion DLC, Far Harbor, has been dated for May 19th. So in about two fucking weeks, there's a trailer that came out for it. Looks awesome. If you don't know, uh, the 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 premise of this uh, story expansion is you're teaming up with fucking Nick Valentine again, uh, and he has a new case about this woman who has lost her daughter, and uh, you and Nick Valentine are sent to Far Harbor to look for this woman's daughter and the secret um, synth like colonization and all this stuff check out the trailer i think it looks really really cool i'm really excited to go back into fallout 4 um because i have missed it a lot and i'm excited to go back but besides that guys this has been all the news this week ladies and gentlemen this has been bzg news thank you so much for joining me this week a lot of a lot of interesting news a lot of cool news this week i'm excited what are your thoughts on all the pieces of news that we had this week you can leave them below or tweet them at me at Bananler Song. I don't fucking know. Just do whatever you want. Or don't even leave a comment. Just fucking just fucking stare at my face and my body and then just leave. I don't know. Do whatever you want. Um, thank you guys so much for joining me today for BCG News. Remember, BCG News goes up every Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Remember to check out our Civil War trailer that fucking hopefully is um, uh, up by the time that you are, that this is up. Hopefully, Jesus Christ. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, stay nerdy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you over there. Thank you over there. Thank you to that dishonored fan who said I knew him so well. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs>